Okay, so to continue our flat coloring, remember I did that step, my kill whitey step of filling it all in with just a gray. And that means there are some areas that kind of stand out as needing something still. And just quick review, I use my magic wand with contiguous on on my vector layer to select the shapes I want to color. I can select multiple shapes by holding down shift. So maybe all those shapes, and then I go to my flat color layer or my flat local color layer. I use, I can use the paint bucket and I can actually hold down option to steal a color. So here's kind of a warm white to paint these shapes in with. And once I have something painted within the shapes, I can actually just use my flat color shapes to select them as well. And kind of the best way to know if you're doing a good job with your with your local and flat color is if you can turn off your black line work and you still have a good sense of what your illustration is. Whether you're stealing colors from yourself, whether you're stealing colors from other sources, that's what matters. And once you get into the rhythm of it, it all makes sense. So how do I test it? I turn off my black line work and I see if my illustration still makes sense. And then it also shows me the things that need some work, like the intestines here are not differentiated enough from the leg. So how can I fix that? Well, I can go to my flat local color layer and actually use my eraser with my tablet and disconnect where they touch, right? Because they touch, that makes them different shapes in the illustration, right? So if they don't touch, then I can use my magic wand or actually just my um, paint bucket, which kind of works as a magic wand, steal a color from somewhere else using option, and then just paint in the intestine a different color. And then the skull, I need to work on the skull and the bones. So quick magic wand work here. Whoops. Actually, actually, yeah, this will work. Um, let's see. So I don't even need to go to my vector layer. And I can fill in behind it with that kind of bone color. Okay, so I think I'm good for the next step. So this is what is called flat color. I guess if I'm really picky, there's some places in the wings that still need work. Like this needs to be filled in completely. Feels like this should be a separate color. Feels like this should be a different color. Maybe this one. So maybe I'll find a new color for those. Then I think I'm ready to move on from flat color. Let's bring some of this warm red into it. Okay, so every shape has its own color filling in behind it, even if it's gray. And anything that looks white is actually painted white, like the inside of the eye there. That's actually, it's actually not white, it's something very close to white. But I don't like to use pure white in my illustrations. And it's nice to have a, a gray background and a white background to see it against. You could also 
just like we did for our logo, fill a background with black and lock that. And that gives you the most variety, right? And my thinking for this is that the background will be kind of dark for it, you know, dark and spooky. All right, so I want to lock every layer that I'm not working on. And once I'm happy with my flat color layer, I can merge it with my gray layer. So to merge it, I unlock it, I select them both, and you can go to Layer, Merge Layers, or you can just use Command E. So now this is my flat local color layer. And without the line work, it looks like this. Good time to save it. Now we get to play with a variation on that tone. So look at the difference here in Plants vs. Zombies and their versions of My Little Pony characters. They use what's called cut edge duotone. So they separate one color into the different values of that color. Lights, darks, even a medium and a shadow. So there's one color in particular on my donkey that's just too overpowering, and that's the green. So I go to my belittled donkey, and I'm going to duplicate all my flat colors. And then the first thing I'm going to do is on this duplicate, I did Command-J to duplicate, I'm going to go to Image, Adjustment, Levels. And with levels, I can simply darken them all. Darken all the colors, or I can brighten them all up. I might also go to hue saturation and take the saturation down a little bit. And I might even push the hue slightly, one way or the other. What I'm looking for is a shadow tone on this green that's a little bit more interesting. All right, so there's a big difference there. Now, really, all I did was just play with my flat color. So it's good to look at it on gray. And which flat colors do I like more? Well, in most aspects, I like the bright flat colors. But for the green, I like this a little bit more. So what's my answer? Well, before I move on to, to tones, I might just want to replace the color of the green, which I can just do very easily on my flat color layer. And I could steal a green and try that, right? And that just looks so unsaturated compared to what I had. So let's go for something in between. So that might be a better start. Then maybe for the back leg, something like that. And then maybe I can use that same green to fill in little shapes in the leg. So I need to select these empty shapes, hold down shift. And then go to my flat color layer and then fill them with that same green. And that helps connect things. And then I might use this yellow Again, this is just flat coloring, but you have to be careful where you select. So we'll get all these little areas and fill them with the yellow of that back leg. Hold down Option to get the paint bucket tool or the the eyedropper tool, and then paint them in on your flat color layer. Now, if you're noticing that your magic wand is always leaving a little bit of space, you'll see that between your edges and your line. 
what you can do is play with your magic wand anti-alias settings. So if you click on anti-alias, when you're using your magic wand, it will fill it completely. It will go right up to the edge. And so you'll get a fuller selection. But at this resolution, it doesn't matter all that much. Oh, last one. So this is all just to, to show you to take your time on your flat coloring. It does matter because these are colors we're going to mess with and keep playing with and build up on top of. So as much as you may want to, don't just ignore the gaps in your flat color. And that's why I filled everything in with gray so that everything was filled, so that all the whites were gone, just in case. And again, with detailed illustrations, this can become tedious the flatting, but it makes life easier later. All right, so I've got my flat color. I like those. Now let's look at, let's do that same step again. Let's duplicate it, but this time my duplicate, I'm going to call do a tone cut edge shadows. So for do a tone, I have to split the local colors into a light version and a dark version. For the first one, I'm going to use shadows. So I'm going to make a duplicate of it, go to my levels, and push my midtones darker. Right. So these are now darker tones. I might also push the saturation a little bit lower under hue saturation. And I might push the hue just a tiny bit to one side. Now, these are my shadow tones. So let me just show you on something simple like the tail. I'm just going to take my lasso with my stylus and I'm just going to draw and kind of cut out a shape where I think a shadow would look cool. And then hit delete. And it will cut it out. So it will cut from my shadow layer, right? And show my flat color underneath. So basically, whatever I'm deleting, these are the highlights. So if I, I want light kind of hitting my donkey on this rim like this, hit delete and make that happen. On the snake, light on the back edge of it like so. Hit delete, make it happen on the, uh, the kind of droopy intestine kind of stuff. You can cut out these cores, hit delete. And this is duotone coloring. It's cut edge because the definition between them is really, really defined. <laughs> or the, the area here on the wing will make a lot of sense. The area between what is highlight and what is shadow is very, very cleanly rendered. And you can just go to town. And it can give a lot of life to your color. Now I have a lot of different textures. But what I like about it is it cuts across all of it. So if there's highlight coming in here, it's not just one color at a time. it will get all the highlights together at once. I can also just use my eraser, but I like using the lasso because it really emphasizes the cut edge quality of it. 